so I had pretty much decided to stay away from any chain lubrication related topics. Uh, for starters, I think it's extremely boring and as soon as you mention chain lube, you get the whole chain wax mafia coming after you and they are relentless. But I decided to make this short little video about my application routines when it comes to wax based drip loops, uh, particularly smooth. I got a surprising amount of messages after I posted an Instagram story with the whole warm wattle kettle thing. So um, I thought it might be worth a share on here as well. So without dragging this out too long, it is as simple as warming up your wax based drip lube in warm water before the application. That makes the lube a little less viscous, I think that's a word, and it penetrates the chain very nicely, just like a lube should do. I really need to stop talking like this. So simply put, I get a nice quick and even application that gets down into every single nook and cranny of the chain. So just hot water, not boiling. I don't want the, the lube to just drip off the chain immediately. If I really want to go crazy, I sometimes use a hair dryer to warm up the chain itself. But that's usually only when I'm not quite sure if the chain is totally dry or not. Then I just apply a layer on the inside of the chain as you normally would while spinning the crank backwards. If you have a lot of time on your hands, you can always do the one drop per link. But who has time for that, really? And to be honest, I'd rather have too much lube than too little in this case. I keep spinning the crank backwards until I see the lube has really worked itself into the chain. And I usually confirm that by wiggling the chain between my fingers and can see lube coming out between the inner and outer plate. And that's where I leave it to dry overnight. I don't wipe the chain after the application. I used to wipe off the excess before, but I found it runs quieter this way. Not as quiet as an oil-based chain lube, but uh, just quite enough for me to be able to live with it. Especially on the Trek now, which is a lot noisier because of the shorter chain stays, one by and more aggressive chain lines. Unlike oil-based lubes, the wax base need to dry, so I always apply the lube the day before I ride to give it enough time to dry and never just before I head out. So that's pretty much it, nice and simple. I know people are very passionate about their chain lubrications routines, so if you're happy with what you're doing now, keep doing that. I don't claim this is the key to unlock the matrix, and I'm definitely not the first one to do this. Uh, this is one of the few pieces of information that I found useful from Friction Facts. You know those weird people that thinks 5 watts of saving is worth $500 in new pulley wheels? Almost as crazy as spending $500 to save 20 grams. Losers! Before I close this down, I thought I would do a quick Q&A with myself and hopefully that will answer a few questions that might come up. So here we go. Does this work with all wax based drip loops? I don't know. I only use Smooth and I've used the new Ceramic Speed UFO drip and I didn't notice any difference with this. It's just as loud as a freaking chainsaw, whatever you do. So this is not for me. Ooh. Why Smooth? I have found it's a good compromise, it runs cleaner than an oil based lube, it is pretty quiet for a wax based lube, and it handles a wet ride without any major issues, and most importantly I can ride my bikes inside without having wax flying all over the room. I cannot say the same for the UFO drip, and definitely not the same for a fully wax immersion thingamajing chain. How long can you ride between applications? If we talk outside, I usually get a 200k or something like that, or one big ride before I do a quick wipe with the dry rag of the chain and do the same warm water application again. 
that means I'm good for another 200k or at least one big ride before I just my compulsory disorder forces me to do a full proper dry train chain clean with all the tools and degreasers and whatnot. Might be overkill for most, but yeah, I'm obsessive like that. Do you use degreaser to clean a chain? Yes, but I use a lot less than I used to when I was on oil based. And if I'm out of the greaser, I can actually get the chain pretty sparkling with just using uh, my kettle again, pouring boiling water over the chain first, use my chain cleaning device with just uh, warm soapy water, do a couple of revolutions, after that a sponge, same kind of thing, and then rinse with water and uh, the chain is pretty much clean. But I still prefer using a bit of degreaser when I can and pretty much a tamer version of the cleaning routine I did in my previous bike wash video. So check that out. On the new chain, do you strip the factory grease? Yes, I do uh, before the first application of Smooth, but I'd usually get one ride in on that factory grease just to enjoy the sound of silence. The magical sound of a quiet dry train. <sighs> but then it's a full maniac degreasing, cleaning, a lot of solvents and all that mess to make sure the chain is bone dry and totally free of any factory grease before the first application. Seriously, why don't you do the wax crot pot chain bath thing? <sighs> Talk to the hand. I'm leaving. So without dragging this out too long, it is as simple as warming up your wax drape, wax drape, warming up your wax drip. Fuck cars going by. It is as simple as warming up your uh, drip paste. It is just as simple as warming up your wax paste drip. 